Welcome to Let's Play Lisa. I'm the voice of Dog. Okay, let's play Lisa. Brad Armstrong has something of a rough childhood. It's true, he gets beat up a lot, but he does care for his friends and he does stick up for them. It's funny, usually in a JRPG where the main character would get beat up like this as a child, you'd see them grow up with a strong sense of morality and justice, and then go on to do all sorts of great things in spite of their difficult childhood. Well, this is not that kind of game. There's really nowhere else to go but home for now, but... Bradley doesn't really want to do that. Well, perhaps if we're quiet we can avoid his father. That was what we were trying to avoid. It looks like Bradley's not an only child. But really, this is a normal day for him. Welcome to Let's Play Lisa. Fast forward many years in the future. An indeterminate amount, actually. A lot has happened since then. Brad has a bit of a painkiller habit, as well as a bunch of other things that we'll get into later. Ah! <laughs> 
That never fails to make me laugh. I know it's morbid, but I can't help it. But the baby's fine. Now, as I said, a lot of things have happened since the last time we saw Brad in his childhood. And the best way to go about saying this is that the world has basically ended. Oh, and there are no more women. Women have all but completely disappeared from the world. So finding a baby is a very strange and, well, worrying thing. Cheeks has the idea to tell the local warlord in exchange for food and supplies and status. But Brad has other ideas. Brad knows what it's like to be young and vulnerable. Now we see Brad try to kick his habit, and his childhood friends try to help him raise the baby. Several more years pass, and the girl is curious about the world. Despite his rough exterior, Brad is not a heartless monster. He obviously wants to give the girl the sort of childhood that he never got to, even though she's growing up in a horrific world like this.
So, one morning we wake up in a hangover and drug-induced haze. Uh, that's, that's just a dog. You sure you can't handle him yourself? Alright, fine. You know, Brad's actually not much of a slouch himself. He's a martial arts instructor. Or was before the world ended. When we go into combat, some characters will have special inputs that activate combos. Uh, Brad doesn't really know anything yet, but he'll learn plenty of attacks we can activate by doing the right combo. Either way, this tiny dog is not much of a threat for us, so... This guy must be really weak. No, we are not going to do that. Maybe later, though. You know, I don't really think we need... Huh. Didn't really have much of a choice there, huh? That balloon is entirely right. You can easily walk off cliffs and die instantly in this game. You kind of need to be aware of your surroundings. This is pretty important. Sleeping has a very random element where some pretty bad things can potentially happen to you. So you only really want to sleep when you absolutely need it, and that's not right now. As for what can happen, well, we'll, we'll see in the future. Taking a look at our stats, it seems like Terry is a bit behind Brad. But with all that excitement for the day, it's time to go home. Huh. Oh no. Terry, this doesn't involve you. Just fuck off, alright? No, we really don't. Look, I in- Dude doesn't know how to take a hint, does he? Well, there's some dead people in our house, but... It's not our friends. You might have noticed that... The three guys that were with us as kids are the same ones here. Cheeks is the guy who's dead outside, but Rick and Sticky are still out there somewhere. Thank <laughs> you. 
There's a lot of hidden items in this game. It's really worth being thorough and checking around everywhere. It can also be dangerous at times. For example, if you jump off ledges, you hurt yourself. The higher you jump, the more you hurt. Supplies are pretty scarce in this game, being the apocalypse and all, so we want to get as much as we can to increase our odds of survival. Oh. A lot of people walk off that ledge their first playthrough. It's easy to see why. So if you noticed, Brad learned a special attack in the last battle. We'll have to give it a try in this one. Oh, I don't think so, my friend. Alright, Terry, let's see what you're made of. Huh. Terry, I'm gonna assume that was just bad luck. A heal that only heals 20 HP in a game where you start with 700. Terry, I gotta say, you're not filling me with confidence at this point. Well, thanks to the effort of Brad and not Terry. That guy did some pretty good damage to us, though. And there are way stronger guys than him out there. It's risky, but we'll try to make do with the few items we've got. And as expected, everyone who knows is going crazy trying to find the girl. Now here's something we can only get by taking a bit of damage deliberately. Magazines are the currency in this game. Of course, they're, they're, they're porno magazines, because you get the idea. But sometimes you have to go way out of your way and sometimes take some damage to find hidden stuff, but it's usually worth it. Okay, if you insist. Oh, Jeffrey must be really tough. Jeffrey, what exactly was your plan with that? Oh, free experience. Really, there's no room for mercy in this world. We can't spare any opportunity to get more experience. Okay, that actually didn't get us anything. Sometimes you'll see me do things, do stupid things, trying to find hidden stuff that isn't actually there. It's because there's so many things hidden in this game, I kind of forget at times. Oh no, the Sugar Boy Drifters. I've never heard of them. I'm sure they're a big deal. Perfume is a very important item and isn't really available in shops. It's basically a revive. The only other way to revive characters is by resting at campfires, which, as I explained, carries some risk. Mm. 
All right, what's your deal? Sugar Mountain. Some characters will have that karate chop all enemies attack, and it's actually pretty dangerous. Now, Terry actually does have something he can do here. The verbal bash actually causes crying sometimes, which lowers the enemy's accuracy. It can also make them pissed, which makes the enemy hit themselves sometimes. So right now, it's the one thing that Terry can do to be useful. Being pissed can backfire, though. Good job, Terry. You did the best you could, technically. Now, something pretty serious went on here. Yeah, they all look pretty dead to me. That guy looks especially dead. Oh, football helmet. Unfortunately, nobody can equip it in our party yet. But we'll get new characters soon. Hmm. Chris Colombo likes to sound philosophical and smart, but usually fails at it. But if you remember, these are the guys who used to beat up Brad and friends as a child. And he gives us a very important choice. Do we sacrifice Terry or everything we've picked up so far? I think I'm going to leave that to you guys. I'd like you to vote in the thread on what we keep and what we give up. We'll see you next time.